Hey guys, welcome here. This is Guy Ferdman of Satori Prime. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world and when you're watching this video. And uh, in this short training tutorial video, what I wanted to talk to you about is some of the changes that have already happened in Facebook and some that are happening uh, as we speak and how you can leverage these changes uh, for your advantage and to help you grow your business. Now, I'm gonna to talk to you about ads first and then we're gonna talk about audience insights and how to possibly use those two things. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, don't worry about it, just bear with me and I will clarify everything. So let's just talk about ads first. You know, the first thing to recognize is um, Facebook has had these right-hand side ads for as long as Facebook has been running ads. Uh, as you can see, there's about seven ads here at any given time, which has made right-hand side ads, in my personal opinion, about obsolete for two years. At least until spon uh, at least since sponsored ads have come out, because sponsored ads were uh, significantly more prominent. Today, sponsored ads pretty much don't even exist anymore. Uh, and what I mean by sponsored ad is a basically a post that you paid for people to see. So a post that someone click on, like a picture or a video, and that would pop up on their screen. And while they were effective or more effective than these ads, at the same time they were ineffective because when someone clicked on your post and an image popped up they would still have to go over to the description and click through to your landing page, which means only about 20% of people did that. So 80% of the people you clicked that clicked through on the ad or on the ad post that you paid for actually never went to go see your offer, which is just not a good use of your money because you're still paying for that. Uh, then came the advent of these newsfeed ads, which you know are very prominent. And uh, as you can see here, one by Ryan Shaw for a uh, Facebook formula. Um, you know, these are much more prominent and the click through on these is significantly better. And we've grown our business substantially over the last six to 12 months since these have come out. Um, and this is what we encourage everyone to do. Uh, some people want to test mobile. That's fine also. And if you do run traffic to mobile ads, you'll actually notice that about 85% of your clicks do come from mobile. However, I know very few people making money with mobile advertising. And the reason for that really is, is that the e-commerce platforms aren't mature enough yet. And the only people I know that are really making money with that are people who are back ending their traffic into amazon.com because Amazon has a one click purchase e-commerce platform. And until that becomes standard across the internet, I think uh, mobile traffic really is not that profitable. Most people are not gonna sit there, watch a 40 minute sales video on their phone. And most people are not pulling out their credit card to pay for it with their phone. There just seems to be inconvenience around that. At least I feel that way. And I have a feeling a lot of other people do too. And because of that, it's just been ineffective. So we've always uh, recommended, at least in the last year or so, that people use their newsfeed ads so that when you, people actually click on it, you actually get taken to the offer and uh, stay away from these right-hand side ads because they really do have diminishing returns on them. And you have to do a lot of campaign management, not to mention you know all the people that you're competing against. So now let's show me, let me show you a different example of uh, what's happening right now. So these are the new sponsored ads uh, that are coming out. They haven't been globally rolled out yet, but they are being rolled out slowly as we speak. And as you can see, they're significantly more prominent. Obviously this image has a lot of white space behind it, so you can't see the full picture, but it actually fits about that entire space right there. So much more prominent, but even better, as you start scrolling down, you can see it gets kind of sticky, meaning it stays up here and it's static. So even if people are scrolling down their newsfeed, this ad is always here. So besides the fact that it's significantly larger in size, you notice how it doesn't look cluttered and there's no competitive, um, there's nothing else that's competing with. You're the only ad here at any time. And what Facebook does, is it actually rotates the ads in this space instead of having everyone compete against each other. So what this should do is a few things. It should inc inc increase your CTR significantly, meaning your click-through rate from the people who are seeing it to the people who are clicking through it absolutely significantly. But at the same time, this is probably gonna increase costs of running ads on Facebook across the board because right now many people are gonna to wanna to start testing this and it's gonna become very competitive. So uh, we've already seen prices go up. I don't know if this is the cause for it, but there has been anywhere between a 100 to even up to 300% increase in some of our uh, cost per clicks when we're competing for certain keywords. And uh, that could either be because of these ads or we've noticed in the past when Facebook is making certain algorithm changes that costs go up for some reason. I'm not really sure why that is. Maybe they try to lower demand uh, while the ad gets launched so they can make sure everything's working, something to that effect. Uh, and usually it levels back down within a few weeks. So we're hoping that that happens now too because there's definitely a bubble, uh, it seems across every single, every single niche right now on Facebook. And uh, because of that, uh, I'm sure a lot of people are kind of staying away from it. 
so we'll see and keep our eye on that what happens and we'll update you if uh you know, once costs come back down or uh, once these changes become global as well. All right. So this is something that we highly recommend that once it does go global, that you do start playing with it. Um, just, you know, stay away from it for maybe the next week or two, because obviously, as you saw, I'm showing you two different accounts that we operate and on one account, it's there on the second one. It's clearly not. So uh, obviously it has not been globally rolled out, which means your ad is still going to be competing for space in the uh, other section. Um, I believe that if you create a new ad, it will be applied to the new platform, but I don't know that for certain. So again, I would just hold off until it's global, okay? Uh, so that's the first thing. Uh, second thing is, in your back office now, you should have what's called Audience Insights um, in your ads manager. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And this is a great way for you guys to start digging through some data when you're setting up your campaigns um, that are gonna allow you to understand who you're marketing to better and then possibly how to market to them better when you're setting up your campaigns. So let's say that we wanted to uh, go after the US, I'll go after the United Kingdom also here, just to add a variable into the mix. Uh, let's say we're doing people between 29 and 45 is our ideal market. And that's what we wanna understand. And let's say these are people who are interested in internet marketing, uh, but they're also into Tony Robbins, and maybe they like Jack Canfield as well. So I'm just gonna throw these people into the mix over here. Uh, we're not going to play too much with the advanced stuff, but pretty much anything you can do in your ads manager, including behaviors, languages, and everything else in between, you could really add here as variables. Um, so that's up to you what you want to do. I just want to take you through what you can actually look at here and uh, kind of walk you through it. Okay. So as you can see, first thing we're looking at here is, you know, basic demographics, age and gender. These are people who are self-reported information from people on their Facebook profiles, information only available for people over the age of 18, okay? So basically what this is telling you is people who like uh, this content, right? Or people who like uh, in these countries and who have these interests, this is how the demographic is split up right now on Facebook, okay? So you could see that the uh, majority of the demographic is in that 35 to 45 year old range. Um, I think if we actually increase the age range, the statistics may change, let's find out, there we go. So just stretch it out a little bit. We can even go 65 plus just to look across uh, the entire range. Obviously, you're only gonna see the data for that which you uh, wanna see, right? So if we go 18 to 65, it's gonna show us, but it's gonna show you where the majority of this market is. So people, again, interested in internet marketing and kind of the personal development space, uh, the majority lie here in this 35 to 44 year old group. And then you have a pretty equal split in the 25 to 34 and 45 to 54 which kind of shows you right away where the interested parties are and kind of where you should be doing your market testing um, when you're driving traffic to these three places. Because over here, while there's interest, it doesn't look like it's the most engaged audience uh, and it's not where the majority of people are. And this will give you bigger audiences to go after when marketing to these people, right? Secondly, the thing you can learn about them is what kind of people uh, am I marketing to? And this could help you with your messaging, uh, especially when you're talking about people's problems because something that stands out for me right away is that the two majorities that we're looking at are both singles, whether it's savvy singles, which means um, households reasonably well-educated and enjoy upper middle incomes. Despite solid incomes, the residents in metropolitan areas often require renting in multiple family dwellings, okay? So it's basically um, upper middle class people who don't own a home yet. Uh, then you have your solid single parents, uh, contains affluent single parents, these predominantly white collar professional uh, metro centrics enjoy comfortable incomes and are a mix of homeowners and renters okay so again this kind of stands out for me because uh, it seems like people who are in this space in online marketing and who are kind of conscious centric are single for the most part which you know I don't know if that makes perfect sense but uh, if I was to create some logic around it or theorize you know it's people who have either gotten out of situations or uh, need to self-empower themselves in some way because maybe they got divorced and now are raising a, a kid on their own or maybe they're just on their own so they have more time and are looking to better themselves. Again, these are just guesses, but it's interesting to note that um, and take a look at that as well, okay? Um, we could see self-reported data from people who listed relationship status. About 50% of them are married. About 32% of them are single. Um, and then in relationships and engaged are uh, at the tail end of that. It looks like most people here are college educated 
um, as well. So again, kind of gives you an uh, inclination to where people are in terms of uh, income and education levels when you're marketing to them and how you might want to set up your sales messages. And then next thing is uh, people and their job titles. You see a lot of people are in sales, so which is great, obviously, because um, again, it makes perfect sense. People in sales are very into personal development, uh, want to better themselves, and obviously need to know something about marketing. Uh, so again, you can call out these kind of people inside of your marketing as well. And then you have uh, management as well. So again, kind of gives you a lot of insights into the income levels and um, and educational levels of these people, okay? So we're gonna come back to this page in just a second. Next thing you wanna look at is uh, page likes. These are other things that these people like. This can be extremely helpful when you're building out your campaign because here are keywords that you may not have thought of that you can start throwing into the mix. People like Darren Hardy, Robert Holden, Mike Klingler, um, you know, you should know all those names if you've been in this industry for a while. Morningcoach.com, Law of Attraction, you know, here's some more authors you might want to look at, more public figures, Brendan Bouchard, uh, Network Marketing Pro, which is Eric Worre's company, Success Magazine, again, all, you know, keywords that you may want to consider when building a campaign of things to test against. Uh, you could also see the uh, page likes, obviously, affinity to the two that we uh, marked, but again, you could see some other uh, ideas that you might get down here. And of course you can open these up and get a bunch more ideas here as well. And also see how related they are um, to, you know, the things that we've picked as well. Okay. So I believe if you click on these, nope, not that, that's just to take it to the page. Let's see if that'll add it. No, it doesn't. Okay. Well, we'll talk about that in a second. Just want to see if that'll work over there too. Uh, you can see where people are located. That's, you know, that could help you, I guess, if you're a small business owner and really want to understand your local market. Uh, you know, devices, how much time they're spending on desktop versus mobile. It looks like a lot more people here are mixed, which which makes sense for today's market, obviously. Um, and you can go through that data too. I really think the beginning of it is way more interesting. Household incomes, again, so people who are, you know, generally interested in stuff like that are in the 50 to $75,000 market. And that's definitely something that we might want to uh, consider. So if you see, I clicked on that now, okay? That's what I was trying to see if it worked before. And it immediately added that income uh, level to our search over here, right? And that's what's now changing the data. But if I'm setting up a campaign and I see that that's where most people lie, basically I wanna add that to my campaign when I'm marketing, right? So you might wanna do all these different things. You can literally start clicking around, not on everything, but on some of these, and they will actually add that criteria to your campaign. And I'm gonna show you about that in just a second, okay? So we're gonna leave that alone for now. We're gonna go back to our demographics and we're actually gonna choose these larger demographic sizes. Okay, so you see, as I click on it, you can actually see it's picking it over here. So for our example here, I just wanna show you that you can do that, but I'm gonna go ahead and just do all for now, uh, at least for people in that age range. So that's what we have. Um, and then I might wanna set this up as a campaign. So once you've kind of like picked all your statistical data that you wanna add in here, which you can, you know, all these different things, behaviors, relationship status, all the different things that Facebook has, you can actually click on them as you're going through this. And once you have your data, you can actually save this and uh, use it anytime you want, or you can go ahead and create an ad. And once you create an ad, it's either gonna take you to use your ad create tool or to the power editor. Uh, for those of you guys who are unfamiliar with the power editor, it's definitely a, a little bit more of an advanced tool, but I do highly recommend that uh, you get familiar with it. A lot of great stuff gets launched in power editor uh, way before it comes to the Facebook ads manager. But for uh, simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna go ahead and click on that. And you're gonna see that it's gonna push the data over to uh, this campaign that I'm building here. So I'm just gonna send it to our, to our blog, just for example purposes. All right, and when I scroll down now, what you guys will notice is when I come down here, all the things that I did research on have already been filled out. So you see the two countries, you see that income level right there, uh, and then you see the interest down here. So I basically get a pre-filled campaign before I've even started. Um, you know, and this is how you can do your research and then push the data over to your campaign building, build out your ad, and then start doing testing to that specific audience and see uh, how that performs. So Audience Insights is a really great way to learn about your markets, uh, understand the income levels, what kind of people you're marketing to, uh, where they might be in their life, and, and how this is really useful 
is one of the things that people don't consider, especially when they're new marketers, is that there's a buyer cycle. And what you wanna do is you wanna be marketing to people as close as you can to the end of a buying cycle. A buying cycle basically means from when a person begins to have an idea that they want something, then there's the research phase, then there's the, the comparison phase, and then there's a decision phase. You wanna get as close as you can to be towards a buyer who's in the decision phase as you possibly can. So if we were thinking of it in Google terms, somebody who's just doing, um, who just got interested in the home business might come to Google and type in a home, you know, home business as search, and then just start their research from there. But if you have a long tail keyword of, you know, how to start a home business or best home business today, um, you know, a home business in a certain price range or franchise in a certain location, stuff like that, that tells you it's a much more serious buyer, someone who's looking to take action sooner. And you want to kind of get in the same habit of thinking about that when you're on Facebook is what kind of mindset, what kind of things are people reading, looking at, doing research on, uh, interacting with even on Facebook that would let you know that they're closer to the end of the buying cycle than the beginning of it. And when you do that, your marketing is gonna be significantly more effective. All right, guys, so these are the two things that are major right now inside of Facebook. You definitely wanna uh, get familiar with both of them, check them out and just play around with and figure out how you can use them best for you and your business. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, leave some comments and uh, I'll happily engage with you guys. All right, take care.